Greetings everyone, Free here. Welcome to the Demo Hub. In today's demo, we're going to take a look at Minds DB. As it says, Minds DB introduces AI to your database. A very fascinating concept, a very fascinating platform. And we're going to go in today, uh, take a look at it, orient yourself around the capabilities, do some demos, and also leave resources and links uh, if you want to go out and try Minds DB for yourself. That said, MindsDB introduces AI in a declarative way on your database. So you might be using Snowflake already and wanting to put the declarative AI in a very low friction way on top of that, MindsDB seems to, to do that by leveraging a SQL. So uh, there are two things to be aware of. There is a MindsDB cloud, which we're going to spend uh, some time doing a demo. Uh, and there is also the open source version. So MindsDB is open source if you want to get started with you can go directly and links to all of this will be in the description go to the github page and uh, the code is available using pip install or docker images you can pull this and run this locally so all of what you're going to see being run in the demo today on the cloud version you certainly could do that leveraging the open source version that said let's jump back into the cloud version and log in once we log in we're welcome to the screen that looks like this for MindsDB, just a quick orientation around it. There's a couple of concepts to be aware of. There's a concept of adding uh, data sources. So this is where your data, your enterprise data resides uh, from which you're going to be training machine learning models. So your sales data, your, your ERP data, your customer data. MindsDB allows uh, us to uh, connect to those different data sources. As for uh, demos, we're interested in Snowflake. So here, assuming we have some customer data in Snowflake, and I do have a, an example here that we're going to look at, uh, a table that pulls my uh, customer data in Snowflake. What is fascinating about this is this table has customer information, the revenue for that customer, what they buy, shipping a priority, discount, and some other good information that uh, is relevant if we're thinking about building a machine learning model to potentially predict the value of our customers, what are the customers ordering and having all of this data would be very relevant. Now, if you want to take a Python and, and write a code and train a machine learning model using the particular parameters to predict uh, an output label, you could do that. But what we're going to see here is doing it in MindsDB without all of the Python syntax and you're going to use just pure SQL to make that happen. But that said, to work with Snowflake, we have to come in and create the connection to Snowflake. So as we saw, uh, when we click on this, and I'll paste this here so we can see what is needed to connect to Snowflake. So here we're going to create or replace a database. So think about this as essentially creating a connection. And the engine we want is uh, Snowflake. And then the parameters, and this is really key to, to, hi to highlight this. Uh, here the host would be your account name in Snowflake and the dot computing snowflake computing.com so you're gonna have to specify that and the port is 443 for https for that protocol so we need that port and the uh, database we're going to be using is demo db so specify your database your user as well as the password the account so the account would essentially be the account you use here from above and the schema the role and then the protocol of course and if you have a warehouse specify that now once you do that and execute this query because I did that already. This would create uh, what is called a database within the context of uh, Minds DB. So you're going to have a database. And then we can come in. I'm not going to put in my credentials there just for the sake of the demo. I just did that already. So now we can come in and do something like select star from specify that connection. So here, SF for Snowflake, we can now query the table within that within that uh, particular schema so here i do have tables so we can query that directly from within minds tb so that's how you go ahead to set up that connection if i come in here and i run that now minds tb is querying snowflake and that data is uh, is visible for us here to train a machine learning model now in addition to snowflake there are several options if you wanted to work with files you can import files into minds tb going back to databases there are other databases that are supported but Again, for our demos, Snowflake is of importance uh, to us. Now, let's go ahead and delete that connection. 
with the connection in place, we can write queries like this. But uh, if this is all we do, then mines DB doesn't really provide a lot of value because this just becomes a query editor. So we're going to have to go in a little bit and unpack the declarative AI capabilities of this. Now, one thing to be aware of with mines DB, let's uh, go ahead and zoom here a little bit so we can see the screen is we can obviously do select star from and give it the database name that we created, which is Snowflake, and uh, go directly to the customers. Alternatively, we can do something like this. So we can do select star from, again, we're still specifying our database name, essentially the connection name. And within that, we can wrap more complex queries inside of that. So think about it as this is your query string you're sending to the database and this would be executed. So whatever we have in here, you could be doing joins. The reason why this is relevant is certain databases might have uh, syntax that is unique to that database. And if we go with this approach, mines DB might not always support that. The query editor might not always support that. So having this ability to essentially take whatever code you have and just basically inject that to go back to mines DB provides a little bit more flexibility. So let's do this simple example here. As before, we're going in and we're selecting the top 10 records and we're seeing that here on the screen. So once you have your connection, you can certainly interact with Minds TB quite a bit. Now, the next piece would be the ability to create what is called predictors. If we're just doing select statements from tables, it's not that exciting. But what if you can predict the revenue of our customers within the Snowflake data set we've seen from Minds TB? So you create with the concept of predictor and where is this predictor going to live? It's going to live within your MindsDB environment. So there is a database here called MindsDB, and this is different from the connection we created, which was SF. So we're going to call that MindsDB, and that predictor would be a revenue model. So we want to predict revenue for our customers coming from this database. And from here, what data source are we using? We're going to uh, the Snowflake uh, data source we had, and we're going to be looking at the customer data just that is a declarative SQL. And what do we want to predict? We want to predict revenue. And what is revenue? There is a column in here called revenue. So essentially we're looking at this table that has a lot of uh, attributes and we're going to let MindDB do the work to predict for us revenue. So this, this field is what we're trying to predict. And if you go ahead and run this, it will create that model for us. Now, you might ask if you're coming from the Python world, well, what model is this using? Is this using regression, LGBM? What exactly is being used here? So I'm not to go into the technical details, but behind the scenes, MindCB uses auto ML capabilities. And the specific one here is called Lightwood. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description below. And so Lightwood is what uh, takes your data, uh, runs through with auto ML, tests a bunch of models and figures out which one is relevant for the predictive power of what you're trying to predict and it uses that model so i recommend you go out and check out uh, auto ml more specifically lightwood which is what is being used there are many frameworks out there for auto ml and essentially mines db is leveraging that so if we run this this will create that model for us now another way of creating the model would be if we uh, want to create a model and I'm calling this a revenue model. Let's create a new model here and call it something different. The new model we'll create, we're going to call this uh, revenue G. So we're just going to add a G there. Again, we're coming from uh, the Snowflake connection. We're looking at the customer's order and we're trying to predict the uh, revenue. But in this case, we can do some ordering by when the results are generated and some windowing. So here we can look back to say train this about two years so that we can forecast out a few years. So there's some very robust capability there as part of creating that model. Let's look at another syntax here. And all of this is available in, in the documentation for Minds DB. We can create a predictor, again, looking at Minds DB with a revenue. We're going to call this revenue S, revenue model S from, again, the same connection. We're going to predict our revenue. Now we can use specific values for our prediction. So if we know as part of our data exploration and uh, Minds DB does provide some capabilities for data exploration. Uh, let's go down here. If you come into data insight, it does provide some data exploration capabilities here. You can get some insights into the, the data types you're looking at, the categorical values, numerical values, and all of that. And so if you know what uh, attributes have predictive power for your model already, maybe through some exploratory work you've done, 
you can go in and specify the values to be used for trading that model specifically. So instead of just having a mines DB go through every single column, which might make training more challenging or take more, uh, takes more time. If you want to specify the specific values, you can go ahead and do that here. So here I'm saying, let's predict revenue, but we're going to use other date priority as well as a quantity, a shipment mode and account balance. So uh, depending on the account balance of people, it affects how much they get to order. Naturally, that kind of makes sense. If we specify that the, the model would take care of doing the work uh, for us. Again, you're doing all of this in SQL. We're not writing Python code. We're not creating train test split. Not, none of that, right? You're just doing declarative uh, AIML here and mine's DB is taking care of that for us. Now you might say, well, creating the predictor or where does that go? If we come in here and do uh, mine's DB predictors, we can see that those models that we created all show up within the mines db predictors i have one model here which just completed i think there's an error i'm gonna look into that uh the other models are, be, are still being trained it takes some time to be trained as you can imagine it's, uh, the data set i have is quite uh, robust so it's going to train those models there is one here that has been completed already this is a sample model it tells you the accuracy of what is being predicted so you have the library of models that's available uh, to use and you can go in and query that by going to the mines db predictor if i wanted to just go in and look at a specific model as opposed to everything else the status of that model that's being trained i can see this particular model we saw earlier is still being uh trained once that's trained there are several ways to use the model that has been trained now what we can do and i'm going to go in and use one of the sample scripts that i have let's query the model revenue g where order date equals this, but this model I know is not uh, fully trained yet. So let's uh, actually look at the model that has been uh, completely trained. We know that this one has been trained already, the renter models. Let's actually go back and val validate that this model has been uh, successfully trained. Put in the statement, validate that this renter model is uh, trained. It's complete, so we can go ahead and use that. The accuracy is pretty good. So this is what the auto ML did for us. Now we can go against that models, give it some inputs, and it should give us a, a prediction essentially. So we're doing an inference uh, here. And if we run this with any luck, we should get a result. And so now that executed, now this is our input and this is a predicted uh, result. And this explains uh, the prediction of the result. Of course, you'd probably have your own model from within your database in, uh, in a production setting that you want to join against this. Uh, model to do a prediction and you certainly can do that. So your data might be sitting in Snowflake. You've created your model leveraging mines DB and, and the SQL declarative approach. Now you want to predict and infer against that data set in production. So here, what you do is again, just going through in this case, because my Snowflake models are still running, we'll leverage the demo model here, which is going against example DB, uh, a schema and the table called renters data. But uh, if we were doing this with production, all we'd have to do is go against the production, the Snowflake connection, and then specify the table. But let's use this example here. I will going against this, join back to a mines DB to get our model and then do an inference on that, right? Let's execute this particular code. Now we are doing a batch inference using the model against the data in, in production coming from our production database and MindsDB is, is doing that live. Now there are more concepts to MindsDB. We've only touched the surface here. There are concepts of AI tables. There are concepts of predicting missing values or time series values. Uh, all of that will be in the documentation. I highly recommend you go out, you check out the documentation. They have uh, some pretty good documentation there is a learning hub there are examples you can follow so just uh definitely check out MindDB. this concept of uh, declarative ai or declarative machine learning is something we're seeing a lot of it in the space we've done quite a bit of demos uh, here on uh, on demo hub uh, of different tools that are all playing in this space MindDB seems to have uh, a fascinating approach to it their integration to snowflake seems to be very tight which is exciting to see and the uh, leveraging of uh, lightwood is also uh, fascinating to see now uh, for folks that would worry about the cloud approach to say, get my data to mines DB cloud and they have to persist that data and maybe for governance reasons, you don't want that to happen. The fact that they have this open source approach that seems very active uh, here on uh, GitHub, uh, you can essentially download and install this on your premises. 
could meet some of the security or regulatory requirements for teams that concerned about that. But as always, uh, we're touching on the surface here, orienting around what it does. If you want to go deeper into all of this, I typically would recommend you reach out to the MindsDB team and uh, talk to them. I'm sure they can help you answer more questions. Links to all of this will be in the description below. As always, uh, this has been through. Hopefully this was helpful with a quick orientation around MindsDB, what it does, a quick demo. In summary, it allows you to do declarative style machine learning on your data in a very low friction way using SQL right on top of your database. They essentially write SQL, tell you what you want. You want to train a model. You want to predict the value. MindsDB takes care of the rest with auto ML for you. What that means is uh, non-Python developers can start building models, right? There's a little bit of nuance in there in terms of really making sure you test and validate this and explainability of models and all of that. But that's a little bit of an advanced concept. Generally, MindsDB will just help you uh, creating those models in a very low friction way, leveraging SQL. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, this has been through here with Demo Hub. Thanks for watching to the end. As always, if you found this valuable, share this with somebody and I will see you in our next demo. Thank <laughs> you.